Hey, what's up? It's Matt in Japan coming at you today with Transformers Earthrise War for Cybertron Trilogy Starscream. Very happy to have this guy in hand. So let's take a quick look at the packaging before we crack him up in here. So there he is in all his glory. And let's take a quick look. Uh, run of the mill Earthrise packaging. Um, on the side, you do get great artwork. And I really love the expression Starscream has on his face. He's like, let's go. Let's attack these Autobots. Um, seems like he's in sort of inside of, I don't know, some sort of spaceship or command center or something like that. Um, what's interesting is if you really zoom in close here, you do see a couple figures or, or bots uh, kind of floating in space. I really can't tell who they are. Maybe it's a uh, hint on who's who's coming up in the uh, Decepticon ranks. Um, again, uh, very uh, light on the Decepticon in this first wave. Decepticons in this first wave. Tons of Autobots. But this is the first Decepticon uh, I've gotten. Um, but yeah, I look forward to more Decepticons. Can't have enough. Um, Run-of-the-mill packaging. Uh, product info on the side. You have your Earthrise packaging. On the back, let's take a look at the product shots. There he is. In his pose there. Seems like he's he's quite posable. Um, there he is with the Battlemaster, which they just reissued for Earthrise, and his jet mode. His jet mode looks phenomenal. Um, 30 steps between robot and jet mode. Um, but yeah, that, that jet mode looks awesome. So, yeah, can't wait. So, speaking of, let's uh, get him out of the box and see what he's all about. Okay, so here we have Earthrise Starscream out of the box, and let's get up close and personal. First and foremost, head sculpt is done in a black plastic with a silver painted face. And if it's really hard to tell, but there are some red eyes under that helmet. A little hard to see. Anyways, um, going down, you get some nice uh, sculpted detail here on these back parts. And also the intakes are painted silver. Really nice detail in there. And some molded detail throughout the torso and the, the, uh, the skirt here, whatever you want to call it, the belt. Um, and again, you get a, a few molded detail bits on the arms. You get the, the null rays. These are really nice, actually. I like them better than the siege, uh, null rays, uh, going down on the legs, a lot of gray, a lot of gray. And then this is nice, um, how they broke this up with this blue, uh, detail here and some more silver paint on the toes. And of course you get your jet parts on the side. Um, on the back, yeah, a whole lot of gray plastic, lots of gray, and you see the nose cone just hanging out there. Not too bad for a backpack. Um, I, I will say I kind of wish this did something. I kind of wish this is as far as it goes. Um, I feel like if I force it, I mean, it's going to break, but I feel like either it should have pegged in or, or kind of just collapsed a little bit lower. Um, as it is, it just kind of hangs out there. You can put it kind of straight like that, or you can kind of push it down. So it's up to you. And also, um, just getting under there, you can see the Decepticon logo and a little bit of molded detail on the wings. We'll get more into that when we see the jet mode. Um, for uh, size comparison, let's just get uh, some other guys out here. So this is a Voyager class. Um, and we'll bring in Siege Megatron for comparison. There he is. And we'll bring in Soundwave. And we'll bring in Shockwave. Can we fit them all in? Let me just adjust this a little bit. Okay. So, yeah, pretty... Uh, not too huge for a Voyager class, but not too small either. Um, he scales pretty well with the rest of them, actually. Um, so, yeah, there they are. The Decepticon, Decepticon team there. Yeah, they look great together. Look nice. Um, I will say one thing. Let me get these guys out of there. Um, I recently got rid of my Starscream Siege. And some people, I, I have been, you know, commenting on Reddit and stuff. And some people, oh, why'd you do that? Blah, blah, blah. And Well, here's a couple reasons. One is the battle damage. Uh, that, that, I just, I didn't like it. This, this version of Starscream is just so much cleaner looking. I really like it. The colors are more vibrant. I, I just... It, it, it appeals to me better aesthetically. Um, I, I, it's just clean. It's really nice and clean looking. Um, another thing is the Tetra Jet. Just, I mean, I know it's cool and, and, and it harks back to the, the 
you know, the Transformers lore and stuff like that. Uh, but the Tetra Jet mode in the Siege Starscream, it just it, it wasn't working for me. The legs, how that folded up on the bottom. and I mean, it looked cool. Again, the battle damage was just, I think it was overdone. Um, so anyways, I, I was excited to get Starscream, the, the Earthrise Starscream. As soon as I got this guy, uh, I basically sold my uh, Siege Starscream. So again, I don't have anything to compare him to. But I will bring in, uh, this is a reissue G1 Starscream. Um, and you can just see uh, the comparisons here. And very nice likeness. Um, they really did a good job. I'll, I'll kind of get up here close um, so you can see. Um, again, very nice likeness. Uh, it's very G1. This is about as close as a G1 Starscream figure besides the, uh, the classics, you know, one that you're going to get. Um, anyways. I just thought I'd compare those. Really nice comparison between the G1 and the most recent Earthrise. So there he is. Let's get him out of the way. And let's get into articulation. Um, let me take these null rays off. Again, I'll show you these in a few minutes. Take those down. Um, the head is on a ball joint and it actually has a decent range of motion. Can look down that much, up. Uh, a little bit to the side and does a full 360. So yeah, a lot of a lot of expression there on the head. Um, also, these wings can be folded back, so you can kind of if you want to if you want to fold them like that, that's fine. Kind of gives them a little bit cleaner look. Um, if you want to have them out like that, kind of more traditional look. Um, again, the siege one was kind of nice because you did have that uh, the, the wings were on that hinge that you could kind of fold up and stuff, so they were a little bit more poseable. I mean. You know there were good things about that siege figure actually, um, so I, I'm not I'm not dissing it by any means. But um, anyways, the uh, arms are they have a shoulder joint there. Um, it is can do a full 360, although it does get hindered by the uh, wings back there. Um, you do get a little more than 90 degree elbow joint. Um, there's nothing at the wrist. Uh, which is unfortunate, but I mean, it's not a deal breaker for me. There is a bicep swivel. It's very tight. This thing is very tight. Um, and that's about it for the arms. Um, again, compared to the Siege figure, yeah, there's no there's no waist articulation. I know a lot of people were complaining about that. Oh, the Siege one had it and this one doesn't. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really bother me so much. I mean, waist articulation is great. I mean, for some really dynamic poses, but it, it's it's really not a deal breaker. So anyways, there is no waist articulation. So let's put that back down. Um, but as far as, uh, and, and again, this the, the articulation is limited. I, I will I will admit, it's very limited compared to the Siege figure. Um, so that being said, right here, you can't really put the uh, legs out as far as, any farther than that, I mean. Um, they can do, they can do kind of, full kick in the front and again because of this plastic piece down here because of the jet mode um, it does get hindered a little bit back here so yeah the the, the leg articulation is a little bit limited um, but you do have um, you do have a swivel there um, and you do have a thigh okay that was the thigh swivel I guess um, and then you do have a little bit more than 90 or about 90 degrees at the uh, knee and of course, great uh, ankle tilt. So that is very nice. You, you can get some cool poses out of him. Um, so yeah, so that's about it for the articulation. Um, so I, I do like to just tilt out his his ankles a little bit and kind of get him in a, in a dynamic pose here. Um, let's, uh, oh, sorry. So I just kind of flipped this up. Again, for the transformation, this can, uh, that can go up and down, but that is for the transformation. So um, let's look at a close look at the null rays again. Like I said, I do like these null rays better than the siege ones. It seems like it's they're a little bit a uh, little bit more detailed, a little bit more molded detail. I think they're a little bit longer and just I don't know, a little sleeker. Um, let's get let's take off the original null rays and give them a give them a comparison. And yeah, they. I think they did a better job on these than they did on the Siege figure. But again, that is my opinion. So yours may differ. Um, anyway, so there are Siege ports or whatever you want to call them on his upper arms. 
and of course he can hold these in his hands. Um, there is some ports on the back of his arms too. Um, and there's a couple on the legs there. And of course in jet mode you have the two underneath the wings. So in that classic sort of uh, Starscream look, I mean this is the way he comes packaged, so yeah, he can get him in some really cool poses. Um, and again, the lack of the art, you know, the weight, the waist articulation is not a big deal to me. Might be to some people, but um, I think this is great. Again, I, I really like the uh, the cleanliness of this figure uh, as compared to the Siege. So let's get him in his jet mode. Okay, so here we have Earthrise Starscream in his jet mode, and uh, this thing is beautiful. I really love the look of this jet mode. Um, again, in my opinion, but way better than the Tetra Jets. Uh, anyways, I have him on this flight stand, just kind of show him off. Um, he's he's slick, he's clean, he's beautiful. <laughs> he's uh, I really enjoyed the transformation too, it was very intuitive. Uh, not quite 30 steps, the instructions say 30. But uh, I, I think I did it in a little bit less. But anyways, um, very, very nice figure. So let's just, oops, let's just take a, this isn't very secure on here, but just thought I'd show it off on the flight stand here. Give a little 360. Um, yeah, really nice, really nice. Oops, I hit the wall there. Okay, so let's take him off there. And let's, Bring in the G1. Let's see if we can stand these up side by side. Bring in the G1 jet there. He's not gonna stand. It's gonna put up against there. Okay, so there he is with the G1 Starscream. Um, I do like the, the fact that G1 had the big honking Decepticon symbols on the top there. That's really nice. And one on the nose. Um, this one, it's you know, they they're kind of kind of small. I kind of wish they were a little bit bigger. Anyways, there they are side by side. New and old, um, really nice job. Uh, again, you know, they could have painted the, the tip blue there to kind of break up that gray. There's a couple things, you know, that they could have done, but all in all, I, I am not complaining at all. So let's take this guy away. And let's just get up close on the uh, jet mode, in the jet mode. So yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of nice sculpted detail on top here, a lot of panel lines and things like that. Um, Really nice red and white paint here. You get the Decepticon symbols there. The nice blue wings with the red and white stripes. Um, you get some molded details in the back where his thrusters are. Um, and you get the orange orange cockpit. And you do see a little bit of detail in the cockpit. You can, if you get in close. You actually can see some, some seats and things in there, or a seat. Um, and of course, his null rays attach on the bottom. And you can also put something up here. Um, I have Megatron's sword cannon thing here handy, so yeah, you can you can plug on some extra things up there if you'd like. Um, I'm gonna bring in an old figure for comparison. Let me just move this back. I have a Titan's Return Astro Train here, and he's in his sort of shuttle mode. So I just want to put those side by side, and I don't have his landing gear down. Let me just put his landing gear down. And, okay, so let's just put those side by side. So there he is, uh, next to Titan's Return Astro Train. I don't have the new Astro Train. I, I'm not not too interested in it, actually. I, I, I do like this figure. I do like the shuttle mode. The train modes, it's all right. The robot mode's great. This is actually the Takara version uh, in the original car, uh, cartoon colors. Um, but there they are side by side, and they are pretty... Uh, Starscream is a little bit longer just because of his nose. Uh, but there they are for a comparison there. So Star, uh, sorry, so Astro Train, see you. Pew. Okay, so there we go. Let's put him back on this. I just kind of have it kind of wedged under there. So let's put him back on his flight stand. And there is Earthrise Starscream. This is an absolutely beautiful figure. I know I'm kind of gushing about it, but I didn't realize until I got it in hand how, how awesome it is. And again, yeah, back going back to the articulation thing, it's not a deal breaker for me. It's uh, I think other things in this figure make up for that, especially in this, this jet mode.
And just not having that battle damage and stuff, it's just, it's so nice. It's really nice. And I'm repeating myself. <laughs> but that's how great this figure is. So go, if you can find it, go get it now. This has been Matt in Japan for Earthrise Starscream. Thanks for watching.